You know, we live in very chaotic times, don't we? There's fires and floods and hurricanes and earthquakes, but there's also rioting and, and looting and, and shootings and even children are being killed. And people come to me all the time and say, why does God allow such heinous things to happen? If he's a good God, why do these things happen? And I'm assuming when they say, why does God let this happen, that they must have some belief system in God I'm not always sure, but I try to take people back. I say, look, if you go back to the creation, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe God created the world. I believe in Genesis 1, it tells us very clearly that God created everything good. Everything was perfect. There was no destruction. There was no uh, anything that was out of bounds. You know, everything in God's world was perfect. Then in chapter 3, sin enters in through the fall when Adam and Eve sinned. And that became the disruptive moment to a perfect creation. Everything started going sour from that point on. In fact, you see shortly thereafter, two brothers, one of them kills the other one, murders him because of, of jealousy or pride. And in fact, if you read Genesis chapter six, a few chapters later, it says this, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time, all the time. And the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. And now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence, full of violence. And God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all people on earth had corrupted their ways. You hear what that says? It wasn't only that the world was corrupt and violent. Everybody was like that. And the Lord was troubled because of this. God's perfect creation that was made good was now evil. And evil was in the hearts of all people because they were sinful and they were lost. Now, you know, God's a God of, of mercy and judgment. Mercy and judgment. You know, the judgment of God comes against sin. The mercy of God is given through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, Paul the apostle understood this. And when he wrote Romans chapter 1, he said, first about the mercy of God, listen. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew and then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from last to first. Just as it is written, the first will live by faith. And then he talks about the judgment of God. He talks about a, a corrupt world in Romans chapter 1. He says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of people. Who suppress, who suppress the truth about their wickedness. People try to call wickedness good. And that flies in the face of God. But he goes on and he says, look, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what was being made, so that people, listen to this, are without excuse. Look, God had a perfect creation, and it went south. He sends his son, Jesus Christ. But even in his divine nature, God reveals who he is to all creation, to everyone. And everyone is without excuse. You see, God offers us divine mercy and grace, but he also will offer divine judgment. And we have a choice. We can choose either mercy or, or and God's grace, or we can choose judgment from a just God because of our sin. There's a great story that illustrates this. There was a professor, and he had 300 students. And he said, okay, I'm going to give you uh, three grades based on three papers. One due October 1st, second one due November 1st, the third paper due December 1st. And based on those three papers, I'll give you a grade. Now, don't be late. I expect you to have been on time. So the first paper comes due on October 1st, and he says, okay, turn in your papers. About 25 students say, we don't have our paper. Can you give us a little grace? He says, okay, you got five days, turn it in. 
So the next paper is due November 1st. On that day, he calls the papers up, about half the class raises their hand, said, our papers are late, and started giving excuses. And he looks at the class and he says, okay, I'll give you some grace. Turn it in in four days. December 1st rolls around, the third paper due. He says, okay, guys, turn in your papers. And now about 200 students raise their hands. They said, professor, our papers are late. He says, okay, well, I told you guys they have to be on time. So everybody that's papers late gets an F, gets an F. And his voice from the back of the room cries out, that's not fair. That's not fair. He said, who said that? M Mr. Smith, did you say this isn't fair? You want justice? Oh, Mr. Smith, was your paper due on October 1st? Did you have it in on time? He said, no, sir. F. He said, what about November 1st? No, sir. F. He said, son, if you want fairness, if you want justice, that's justice. Now, that's my point. You know, with our God, he's, he, he's just and merciful. If you ask for a just God to be just toward you, look out. We're all sinful. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. If you want his mercy, then ask for his mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, in that book of Romans, there's a great passage that illustrates what I'm talking about. It says in Romans chapter 3, verse 22, the, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all, all who believe. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. There's no difference, it says. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, it says in Romans 6. But he goes on and writes here, listen. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came through Christ Jesus, his son. You know, be careful when you're calling for justice because you may get justice. And the wages of sin is death. And it's not only a natural death, but it's an eternal death. But the grace of God, the mercy of God, comes through faith in Jesus Christ and that covers a multitude of sins. So, the next time you're thinking about the difference between justice and mercy, think about your position in front of God right now. And is he looking at you through the uh, eyes of his son? As his redeemed child? That the blood of Christ has covered every sin in your life? And you have his mercy? Or are you wagging your fists angrily at God calling for judgment? Be careful. You know, as for me and my family... We rely moment by moment, day by day, month by month, year by year on the mercy of God through Jesus Christ. Are we all perfect? No. But through the Christ, we are made perfect. And the day will come when I will stand before the Lord and I will have his mercy cover me. Not his judgment. He judged his son for me, but I'll have his mercy. I hope this has been helpful in understanding a little bit about the distinction between justice and mercy. And look, if you want to reach out to me, go to my website, paulteskeministries.com. I have a prayer button there. You hit the prayer button. You can share your thoughts, your concerns, your prayer requests. I'll get back to you. I'll answer you. I'm doing this for you because I want to sow into your life and help you fully understand the nature of God and his love for you and the great gift he's made available to all creation his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed a broken world to give us the opportunity to live with him forever in, in a perfect place. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.